Raise your hand if you think that now, more than ever in your lifetime, America is on the brink of civil war. Who here believes that their rights are under attack? I'm Lori Siegel in rural Michigan, where one of the largest statewide militias is preparing. Three weeks before the presidential election, we were invited to Southwest Michigan to spend the day with the Michigan Home Guard militia. And you're ready to we watched as they now. practiced military-style drills in preparation for what they believe is the possibility of civil unrest resulting from the election. You're going to go over your head. Okay. Every week, the Home Guard holds trainings across the state. Today, we're going over room clearing. Today, they're practicing building infiltration exercises that they imagine could be used in a hostage rescue. Room clearing's tricky business, and it never goes as you think it's going to. The group formed in 2014. They say their members come from a range of backgrounds, with day jobs including mechanics, politicians, teachers, and carpenters. Keep your finger out of the trigger guard until threat is identified. The Home Guard is a far-right paramilitary group. There are an estimated 181 groups like them in the U.S., according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. And many of those groups are increasingly turning up armed to protests like those in Portland attempting to assume the role of law enforcement and often fueling violence. No ammo on you. 32-year-old firefighter Adam Peisker joined the group in 2015, shortly after leaving the military where he served in Afghanistan. A background in the military or law enforcement is not unusual in these so-called militias. Ready, up, bang, bang, back down. He told us he's second in command of the Home Guard and helps run the statewide group that he says includes hundreds of members. When you're thinking about Michigan Home Guard, I mean, what do you feel like you're protecting or defending? At this current point in time, we are protecting our group, our members, our families. They fear government overreach, like mandatory vaccination, gun control, and most recently, COVID-19 shutdowns. In May, members of the Home Guard stood outside a barber shop in Owasso, Michigan, determined to help the store stay open in spite of the governor's lockdown orders. So it is in the self-interest of these groups to say we have a right to do this, but they don't. They're just wrong. Attorney Mary McCord, who worked in the Obama and Trump Justice Departments, is an expert in private militias. In 2017, she represented Charlottesville, Virginia, in litigation against several paramilitaries involved in the deadly alt-right rally. She says it is illegal for private militias to train or engage in paramilitary activity if their intent is to use it against the state or to take on the role of police. The Supreme Court has been very clear as far back as 1886 that the Second Amendment does not protect paramilitary organizations. This mythology that because the Second Amendment protects an individual right to bear arms for self-defense, you put that in combination with an open carry state, and that's one of the things that these uh, self-professed groups will point to as their authority. Meanwhile, these groups are growing. Web traffic to MyMilitia.com, a website where militia members connect to chat through everything from basic survival needs to how to construct grenade launchers to whether they should declare war on Antifa, has doubled since April. Talk to me about what happened with the Michigan Home Guard around the pandemic. It started off, okay, that makes sense. You know, we're going to lock down for two weeks. And then our governor kept extending it. Thousands of small businesses went under in Michigan because of this. So right there, it caused a big rift in our uh, state. People just started saying, okay, we can't trust the government. We can't buy toilet paper. So let's try to be more self-sufficient, see what the militia can do, but also be able to protect yourself if that riot does happen. While members told us they, quote, won't fire until fired upon, authorities arrested a former member of theirs in a plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer on October 8th. While Peisker says the suspect, Adam Fox, had been kicked out of the group for being, quote, quick to temper, he told us that the governor isn't listening to her constituents. So it's all on her. You believe that it's all on her. But if you look at everything she's done. But you're excusing it. I, I am excusing it in a sense. You're right. Um, essentially, she, I feel she's brought it on herself. She's not listening to the a people. A kidnapping plot. Yep. Murder. Potential for murder. You got to know you're making people mad. And if you continue to make people mad, they're going to find that snapping point. Politicians make people mad all the time, but we don't reach a, a, a point of where they, quote, deserve to be kidnapped. We don't condone it, 
But like I said, we step back. We you say she brings it. it on herself. She does. I mean, it's really disturbing. We spoke to Governor Whitmer remotely just 13 days after the plot was foiled. That day, with COVID cases increasing again, she made the decision to wear a mask at all times in public. Could you take me to the moment that you heard this news of a kidnapping plot? Since April, when the president first mentioned me in some of his press conferences. And then all she does is say, oh, it's the federal government's fault. Since then, I've had um, death threats. I've had to have some tough conversations with my daughters and my husband. We've had people outside on our front lawn with um, automatic rifles on, on more than one occasion. Just one Maybe week after the plot was revealed, President Trump lo- called Fox Business News to that. comment on Whitmer's performance as governor. Uh, she wants to be a dictator in Michigan. Two days after that, he held a rally in Michigan where his supporters chanted for Whitmer to be placed behind bars. Lock them all up. How has this rhetoric impacted you? The organizers of the the plot to kidnap and to put me on some sort of a trial and then execute me. This is the very language that that they were using that helped inspire some of, of their their effort. And I think it's very dangerous. I was shocked. When President Trump was asked at the first debate to condemn white supremacists and right-wing militia groups, his response? Stand back and stand by. Was interpreted by Adam Peisker as a message to groups like his. So when he says stand by, what does he want? What is he planning on having us stand by for? In some of his uh, speeches, he has mentioned Somebody has to stop the riots if the government won't. So he's kind of sidelining the militia to do it, is what militias out there are thinking. Raise your hand if you think that now, more than ever in your lifetime, America's on the brink of civil war. Who says we aren't already in a civil war? Right. That's well, already it's started. It's already started. When you have cities that are burning, you got burning cities, you got Chaz centers set up where people can't go in and out. That is Law enforcement war. can't can control it. Do you have a civil war on your hands? Mm-hmm. Peisper told us that if there is violence, his group will not run to the front lines, but instead will wait to see how events develop. Yet, he's quick to defend those who do take up arms, like 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse, who was charged with illegally showing up with an AR-15-style rifle to a protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where he shot and killed two protesters. He claims he was acting in self-defense after a gun was pulled on him. Had there been a group like this to help him and, and, and ward that kid off from grabbing his rifle, none of that would have ever happened. But Kyle Rittenhouse also killed two people, injured another person. He was under attack. He was under attack attack by a person with a skateboard that came after him for two seconds. You believe that his actions were warranted? Yes. 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 Do you guys believe that you would have made the same choice that Kyle Rittenhouse They'd have killed me. I wouldn't have been as fast as him. I think the only thing I have to say bad about Kyle Rittenhouse's situation was he was underage, and it was a misdemeanor to carry the rifle at his age. The Kenosha example shows you what tragic results you can have. When you put a group of men together, and it's mostly white men, uh, with heavy weaponry, assault rifles. You know, you do end up getting a crowd mentality. People will often do things in groups that they wouldn't do as individuals. And I think that's why we've seen some of the tragic occurrences. That is what makes this so dangerous. You know, a constitutional lawyer told us that it's illegal to act as a private militia in Michigan. What's your response to that? I don't have a response. I would have to look into it. Ready?